Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, look, we're back. We're, we're going to do this one more time. Um, we're going to have some fun with it too. Pretty sure that's that's what we're going to do this time. Have some fun. Um, we do that sometimes. You know, we actually enjoy ourselves and we have a good laugh at ourselves all the time. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, this is the cool part. We get to uh, have some fun, kind of play it fast and loose. Let's start. All right, welcome. In case you are out there somewhere, we are um, we're doing like this spiritual warfare daily thing. And we're doing it from the place that we want to see God move on a daily basis in our lives. We want to do so in a way that, that honors Him, that kind of puts ourselves towards the back. And, um, you know, there's a lot going on. I guess that's the hope. The hope is that we actually go about this in a way that, you know, honors and edifies God. Um, the way this works, I'm probably going to do my best to have, like, Instagram up. Instagram is a tricky, tricky animal. So if you're watching and you want to comment and you want to see your comments up on the screen, uh, your best bet is to actually go over to YouTube or Facebook. I know. Who's on Facebook anymore? No one. I'm just kidding. A few people. Not many, though. You're, you're, I don't know. You're an endangered species, if you are. Except for, you know, Lindsay Alicandro. She's on Facebook, and she's killing it. All right, Jay Robinson, we have a few. <laughs> Pastor Steve, it still takes a while to get used to. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, first and foremost, we're going to pray. So in case you're watching, it's what we do. We actually, um, we pray before we read the Word of God, and then we dive in. Heavenly Father, we love you. In the name of Jesus, Father... It is, of all places, it is, my ears are back. Father, it is Wednesday, March 27, 2024. Lord, the world seems like it's falling apart, yet your people are falling together. So, Father, I just declare right now that you are on this this gathering with us digitally, online. Lord, I just declare that your voice will speak through to the people and will speak directly to them the way that you wired them to receive it. Satan, you have no work, no reach, no effect and impact into this conversation. We rebuke every foul spirit back to the core, back to Sheol itself. Satan, your work will come to nothing. We declare freedom, liberty. The captives will be set free in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. It's um, yeah, it's Wednesday. There's like a bunch of fun stuff that's happening. Of course, we're... What's up from Canada? Claudine from Canada. Um... There's, there's just a lot. There's a lot that's happened today. And I know we say that all the time, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in some stuff, some video files, because we're having some fun with this and we're going to do, do, do bring it here. We're going to look at the events. Um, and just in case you don't know this, the reason why we're, they're really trying to shut down TikTok, if I can be completely honest in my humble opinion, which I think is what the people are saying these days. They're trying to shut it down because it's probably the freest platform on the planet. You can say all sorts of stuff, whatever your little heart desires. They don't, they don't shut it down. And there are these weird little pockets. There's like Christian TikTok. There's witch talk. There's, uh, there's black TikTok. There's all these little weird intersecting groups of things that don't quite overlap. Um, but we're going to tackle just some news right out the gate. Um, uh, this is going to be kind of cool. All right. We already covered the whole ship thing. But wait, there's more. And this stuff is actually pretty interesting. I don't know what I'm going to go with first. I didn't like organize this. And for all you people out there that are wondering, this is all playing it fast and loose. All of it is fast and loose. So if you have thoughts, questions, if you want to talk trash, I'm, I'm fair game at this point because we're having fun. All right, here's the first one. Has just announced that he is going to close the ports <laughs> due to the situation. All right, he gave a emergency announcement to the country just today in response to this and this is massive something is going very close it's going to be as large as the full moon and it's going to grab the great i jump lanes um i'm going to bring up one video real quick that's actually kind of even more interesting it's this guy right here where's this guy okay watch this everybody is talking about april 8th but did you know i'm jumping lanes because the port's a thing it's port for different reasons, but let's let's see what this guy has to say. NASA will be firing three rockets into the eclipse. This project is called Serpent Deity. No joke. 
Like why? Of all the things you could call it, why does NASA have to go there? And of course, everyone will joke around, right? Not a space agency. It's accurate. It's not a space agency. It's something else. Just for everyone to, you know, flat earth um, laughter. Why is it? Why is it right now? I'm not a flat earther. I'm somewhere in between. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not quite, you know, on either fence. I know that deception is going to run rampant, but here's my question. Why is it NASA has the world's largest green screen studio on the planet when they, here's what gets crazier. When they were sued by the company that designed it, the company said that they were, they're expecting, they have a written agreement where they could film movies and do all sorts of cool, cool guy stuff there. And then let NASA shut it down. And then NASA's response was that they could not exactly, where's Kyle? Kimberly, you're absolutely correct. NASA would not respond to the complaint and they cited matters of national security as the reason why they wouldn't do that. Can it, I mean, come on, come on. Let's hear what this guy has to say. This is pretty good. This is from NASA.gov. NASA to launch sounding rockets into moon shadow. As if they don't have, you know, more money to burn from Americans. During the solar eclipse. This is from Forbes. Why NASA will fire three rockets at the solar eclipse. But why is it called serpent deity? The serpent or snake is one of the oldest and most wild. It's a very good question, by the way. I'm just saying. Serpent God is the name of this mission. This guy's video is pretty good. You've seen this it. symbol of NASA and the serpent. NASA in Hebrew literally means deceive. And watch this. In Genesis 3.13, And what is this that thou hast done? And the woman, Eve, said, The serpent beguiled me. What is that word beguiled? This is the Hebrew word H5377. First off, if anyone is going to work in the Blue Letter Bible and the interlinear and they go into the Strong's Concordance numbers, kudos. Kudos, my friend. And this guy actually did a very good job. <laughs> Tra Tracy Martin, you're absolutely correct. Tracy's over there on the Instagram chiming in. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Here we go. Or NASA, NASA, which means to beguile or deceive, but it gets better. Two Hebrew words before this is H5375, which is also NASA, NASA, which means lift up, lift up to deceive. NASA literally means lift up to deceive. I just appreciate people that do their own homework. That's where I'm at in life. That's that's my current situation. Um, and here's why. I, um, I don't care. I don't think we're going to space anytime soon. Um, you know, the band Warrant sings a song called Heaven Isn't Too Far Away. Closer to it every day, right? I mean, we're dying. All of us are dying one day at a time. And I pray to God, whoever you are, and this is the spiritual motivation. Um, I would encourage you, the strongest people I know, go out of their way mentally to die daily. And I have this phrase, die faster, live longer. Die to self. All right, Jesus tells us that. Like, we're supposed to die to self. And we're supposed to put on you know, the mind of Christ, put on the man of Christ, and operate from his footing. And he said that we're going to be deceived. Matthew 24 opens up, and I don't care about eschatology, wherever you're at. I don't care if you're pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, um, ad-lib, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. As long as you're here doing the work and focus on the work, we're good. And I just I know too many people who have checked out. And yes, the, the human psyche is one that disengages. If you think that you're getting a hall pass out, there's no work to do, you disengage. And so we're not about that. So on our part, we want to be about the work, which means if Jesus warned us, the first thing he was he responded with about the end is that many will be deceived. Um, the reason why NASA is such a big deal and space is such a big deal is because they had to create this massive narrative. The only way that they could introduce demons from Genesis 6, from Enoch, from, from Jude, is if there is an extraterrestrial narrative that doesn't include a biblical narrative, a biblical worldview. They have to give us an extraterrestrial worldview, an out-of-this-world worldview. And this is how they're going to usher in demons. And they're going to be people who will love. It's just like the movie Independence Day. There are people like standing and, and dancing on top of the building as the, the building gets destroyed. Um, the only way that the masses who love to blindly think of space and exploration, their, their hamsters go off. The only way that it could actually really work is if there is a very, very strong delusion, a very strong alternative. And on our part, we're not supposed to just simply blindly accept everything. We're just not. And so it's not to... Um, 
it's not to dwell, but it's to actually process and move on to the next. And so things like this that you'll see, it's like, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the souls be saved under the bridge. Father, we declare that every deceptive act and work of the enemy will be exposed. Every deceptive plot from the highest places will be exposed. Father, we declare that NASA will be exposed if there's any deception within it. And think about this. We're able to pray very specific prayers, but we're also supposed to pray into situations. And if there is deception, we're supposed to kind of like weed it out. So that's what we do. Um, divine soul, we have never been to space. Yeah, Blue Beam, Voice to School Technology. There are all these things. The government has patents on things. Um, the second beast of Revelation rising in Texas. I, I don't know. I don't know if it does. Yeah, now we have names like Devil Comet. Like, we just go out of our way to name things demonic names, and it's it's almost kind of laughable. I say that because just pray. Pray and say, God, would you please give us insight as to what we see, what's happening, what's going on. And there's a bunch of other stuff going on, and ours is the work of faith. Ours is the work of praying into circumstances and situations. And right now, there's a lot of people who just aren't. They're just not doing it. Okay, I'm going to jump lanes back. So we know that the eclipse is coming up. Our job is to pray against it. It's to pray against whatever evil demonic plot that's manifesting itself against God, God's people, and this place, because we actually kind of like this country. We want to save it. We want to redeem it. We want to let go of the America we're born into and reach for the America God has in store. We're going to pray that God's people will be spiritually informed and kept and preserved. Um, all right, we're going to go back to the ship real quick. All right, guys. News alert. Everyone should know this, okay? So the shipping container here that just took down the bridge in Baltimore, okay? There's a little backstory. Let's get into it real quick. In case you live in Texas, the CEO of this company, the sister of a, of a, of a prominent politician, <laughs> she drowned in a pond inside her Tesla in Texas. Um, how convenient this ship <laughs> crashes into the pier six days later. You're just gonna blow your mind. So this is uh, Angela Cheo, who just so happens to be Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law. Yeah. I, I gotta keep going. Mitch McConnell, the Senator. Uh, well, she is the CEO of the shipping uh, company that that ship was connected to. Uh, but it just so happened six days ago, this girl died. So basically, now tell me if this doesn't sound suspicious. Uh, her blood. Look at the BAC. Look at that. Look at that. And she she backs into. <laughs> I come on. Listen, we're not very smart. We want to be force fed, right? Information and things. But come on. At a certain point, look. What what do you what do you want what do you want us to say? There's more. But wait, there's more. I'm going to kill the music and not make it so dramatic. Two of the most military, uh, most capable military cargo ships in U.S. inventory, right? They're the fastest vessels that can transport things around the world are stuck now in the harbor. My phone's blowing up. Uh, when it goes into details and the fastest cargo vessels and two other reserve sea lift ships are in the port of Baltimore. That's great. I'm sure that's just coincidence. Ten ships, not including the dolly, are stuck inside the port of Baltimore. They're comp comprised of bulk carriers, one vehicle carrier, three logistic naval vessels. So great. Here's what I'm we're going to go with this. Yes, Chelsea, Renee, it's related to this. All right, so let's just say hypothetically speaking, and it's purely hypothetically speaking. Okay. Russia is a little upset at what happened at, you know, and all those people were killed inside that attack. And of course, all those people, the, the four soldiers that carried out the attack, where did they go back to? Ukraine. What are we propping up? Ukraine. So what if, and by the way, there were two other bridges that were attacked. Uh, one in Ohio, which I think is more is more prominent one of the, of, of the two. Um, what if this actually is an attack and our government isn't telling us? Why would this even happen? Well, first off, we know our, gov our own, our own uh, politicians are on Chinese payrolls. Well, like we know it's, it's crazy. Even have that one guy, what's Sawwell, that was sleeping with a Chinese spy. Additional vehicle carriers in the port, but outside the, the bridge collapse. Um, 
Yeah, all traffic in and out is suspended until further notice. The closure of the waterway will immediately impact the arrival and departure of additional ships, products, everything. Um, what if this was already an attack? Dead serious. What if this was actually already an attack and we're just not calling it that? And of course, Russia wouldn't take credit for anything. They'll just let us kind of wallow in our own. Um, yeah, S2 Underground is pretty good. Um, anyways, all this to say, we pray against it. We process this, and it's not to get lost in the noise of the world. Ours is a perspective of spiritual warfare. And if you're looking at it, yeah, Robinson, our, our, our biggest infrastructure attacks are power. If you're looking at this from the right perspective, you're going to say, like, God, we don't know what's going on. We need heavenly insight. You are praying for heavenly insight. You're praying against successful attacks against this country. You're praying against the work of the enemy and what he's doing in our world through our politicians. You're praying against our politicians. Oh, yeah, CW7 Pew writes, well, how many food <laughs> factories have been burned down? Almost 2,000, like the latest one. And then now there's something about having um, something crazy. I think we have, yeah, goods and services destroyed in our economy. Pray, God is allowing this destruction. Pray. Uh, I think we even have like the bird flu now that's, that's on the livestock. Listen, we want to cover our food supply. We are at a point in time where God is allowing a shaking to occur. He's allowing all these things to be attacked. We need to be covering things in prayer differently, praying for protection, for provision, for the safety of these things, for the fast repair of these places, and against the government's hand and everything that they're doing. Um, if you believe that the government is here for our benefit, um, you're already behind the curve. And again, what we're doing, we're not trying to recap a bunch of noise that you already know. We're trying to give you a spiritual footing perspective that a lot of people disregard. Um, the, yeah, there are simply too many things that are going sideways. And all of it is stacked up against us enjoying life. So when we see these things, our job is to pray. If you refuse to pray, if you don't want to pray, if you don't know what to pray, we're trying to fix that. We're trying to intercede and stand in the gap. We're trying to educate you on the fly. I believe that revival is always possible, but usually, historically, it means that we have to have our backs against the wall. So I have this little phrase called revival on the way down. And I believe that God is always going to be moving. I'm not with these people, these weird cessationists that think that, that the book of Acts stopped. I believe that exploits are coming. And I'm going to give you a big high-level picture, and this plays into what I want to talk about tonight. It's three things. Um, in order to be the most effective class of heavenly citizen on earth, you have to know your identity. You have to know your authority and walk in it. But more than that, um, just having a car doesn't mean that you're driving it well. Just just having you know, resources doesn't mean that you're using them well. You have to know your responsibility to the kingdom of heaven. And you can say, well, my pastor just tells me I can just look out for myself. I can treat yourself, love yourself, right? You know, give yourself a high five. Um, just you and yours. And no. So this is the biggest fallacy of American cultural Christianity. Jesus' entire ministry was others. It was others. It was not self. <laughs> Jesus allowed himself to be destroyed. It is others. And so if we look at this this way, we are supposed to be blessed to be a blessing. The reason why God chose the children of Israel is because they were the least of all the nations, the least of all the people. They were the best at oral tradition, which meant passing down stories from generation to generation. And of all things, what he told them was that, I'm going to bless you in order for you to be on display to other nations to choose me, because they want to choose the blessing of God onto the life for the family, the people, community, the area. And simply what happened was, you know, it's humanity. Humanity's frailty... Our, our ability to fail at epic proportions is actually quite substantiated at this point. So um, God's intention is not for us to fail. God's intention is for us to walk in his righteousness. And that's why, to the best of our ability, we're supposed to strive for things. Um, yeah, Pew writes over on Instagram, train for war, pray for peace. Yeah, it's better to be you know, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Like We should be, think about this for a second. The heavenly type of citizen on earth should be the most trained, capable, equipped, prayed up, studied, ready to give an account, ready to give a response, ready to bless and speak life, ready to pray and intercede, ready to lift up and to cast down, ready to set the, let the oppressed go free, to loose the bonds of wickedness and the cords that hold us down. But that takes having a heart for others. 
And so again, we're talking about identity, authority, and responsibility. And the identity is that we're all sons of God. You really have to seize hold of who you are and, and why you are made this way. The second is your authority. Just like the story of the centurion, Jesus marveled at the amount of faith that the centurion had. We're supposed to be walking in a measure where we know all God has to do is say the word and it'll get done. We don't walk that way. And then from there, it's a responsibility. What if we keep praying for power and authority and for all these things to be corrected and God's like, I'm not going to usurp the authority I gave you. I'm causing you to be sent to the earth to make these things happen. In the name of Jesus, we can do all things. All things are possible. God's ready to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we could ever think of, hope for, or imagine. And so I'm saying these things because I'm going to present you with this idea is that God is not going to jump in and do things that he's already given us the authority to do. He's given us the identity, the authority, and the responsibility. It's up to us if we don't make it happen. I'm dead serious. Remember, God is not moved by our needs. He's moved by our faith. God sees what we need. Just like, you know, the birds in the air, God makes sure that all of them, you know, have food. Like, life still goes on. There's, there's relative order. But God's looking at us like, why are you asking me to do things that I gave you authority to do in my son's name? And this is the other part. If you know your identity and you know your authority, you have to present yourself as someone that is sent by God, an actual emissary of God. And you simply don't want to. I'm dead serious. The, the majority of the church that thinks that you're just going to get raptured out of here, why would you ever be in an uncomfortable place where you have to tear down and speak against the things, right? To tear down the high places, the altars. Why is it we admire stories like Gideon so much? What did he do? He tore down the altars. Why is it that so many of the Hebrew people that escaped, <laughs> that escaped Egypt in the Exodus, why is it that they died? Why did God kill off an entire generation of Hebrew people in the desert, in the wilderness? Because they believed the bad report. Because they saw idols. And even then, even worse, Samuel. Samuel warned the people about wanting a king, wanting Saul. He said, okay. In fact, I'm going to read what this is, right? Because this is about authority. And look at us. We're actually going to read the Bible. I forgot what chapter is. Is Samuel 8, Samuel 2? Samuel warning the people. While we still have Google search, yeah, it's Samuel 8. Look at me. I still remembered a couple things. Um, I want to read this to you because it's, it's pretty powerful. And it's, it's going to go away that most people would anticipate, but it's, this is like pretty clear. All right, so Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. So in case any of you ask, like, why are these politicians going sideways on us? Well, here's some information. This is great. <laughs> the king will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some will run before his chariots. <laughs> he will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. <sighs> will some will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for the chariots, basically slaves. You can be, you know, conscripted into the army. Um, you're going to do everything that he wants you to do because we want someone to rule over us because that's just us. We don't want to be a theocracy, which is a people run and, and governed by God. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers and concubines, by the way. Which is what, again, when you let a wicked, perverse government go its way, you have a lot of girls who are turning to sex work. Even some guys, but it's, it's, being, it's become so normalized. And even a, 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 the fact that there are men out there that would pay for this stuff online is just insane. And he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves and give them to his servants. He'll take all your taxes and he'll give them to migrants. High five. And he will take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men, and your donkeys, and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep, and you will be servants. And you will cry out in that day before, because your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. So, if the, again, like here's a correlation. There aren't many people who will watch you know, our content and what we're doing, right? Because we're talking about actually being equipped in faith to tackle a bunch of heavy things. And usually that isn't a left-leaning individual, right? It's more of a right-leaning individual. But ours is 
to basically reap what we sow, time, seed, and harvest. We've put in a bunch of time where we've, you know, done well and we've flourished underneath these rulers, and then time goes by, and then what are we reaping? We're reaping all the filth and the trash and the trust that we put in these people, and they've they've done horrible things with it. When we cry out against our rulers for help, I'm going to read that last line again just so it kicks in. The Lord will not hear you in that day. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this up. Catherine Kenny, thank you for your spine. Perhaps give back braces to the weak church, and we need to repent. Yes, um, this, all, this is all about repentance. But again, the, the main topic on tonight is identity, authority, and responsibility. Your identity as a son of God is because you repent, is because you call Christ Lord. Your authority is because you're operating in the name of Jesus. You've been transfigured, right? Like you're allowing the transfigured Christ to come into our hearts and actually change things and move around the furniture and the landscape and clear out a bunch of trash. And then responsibility. You know, for men, especially for military and law enforcement guys out there, right? Uh, the goal is that you operate with a code, a sense of honor. And we do things for God, our King, because we want to honor our God. We want to actually give him not just praise, and he's worthy of all praise, but read his word, spend time, get to know him, be in relationship with him. The only way that you can understand that you're a man sent under authority is by spending time with that authority. The only extent, the only way that you'll know the extent of the authority that you have is by understanding the authority that God gave Christ. And then what do we do with that? Um, we wore it out. And because of that, you know, we need to be refined. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that will pray for strength. And of course, um, why is God going to give you strength if you have no intention of needing it? Let's say that you are a person that lived your entire life on the, on the couch, and then you get sick, and you say, God, heal me. Why is he going to heal you if you are intent on living your life for yourself when the work of Christ and the cross is others? Okay, so let's say that you are people out there who um, want your children saved and blessed and kept and looked after, yet you never raise them to have a relationship with God or Christ. You never raise them in their heavenly identity. You never told them <laughs> what their authority was. You never taught them that. And then you never made sure that they knew that they had a responsibility back to the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. Why is God going to save your children if they have no heart for him? Why is God going to save you if you only have a heart for him when it's convenient and you want to go to him like an ATM machine? The word of God is true. Let God be true and all men liars. I'm not saying that God doesn't have a heart to do these things, but think about it. It takes so many people, these crazy traumatic events, these disasters, these tragedies, in order for them to stop and turn their hearts around and reposition themselves onto God. That's not honor. That's not praise. That's not being worthy of God's love and attention on our lives. And it's not a message that the church gives because the church doesn't want to chase you out of the room. And you're, you're not, people aren't signing up to hear this message. Because why? Because you're comfortable and you have worshipped comfort. You've sacrificed Christ on the altar of your comfort. Men, you've sacrificed your authority in the household because the woman is leading the spiritual authority of most households. That's just the way that it works. The woman's driving at it. And even if the men are trying to, I can't tell you how many times, since I, in the men's ministry that I do, I can't tell you how many times I've heard men say, I'm getting nothing from the church that we're going to, and my wife refuses to let us leave and go try something else. And so you've stunted your man's spiritual you know, his spiritual existence, his ability to actually rise to the occasion and change things. And yes, you need women. You are the spiritual neck that turns the spiritual head of the home. And so if you are a woman out there and you have no regard to let your man stretch his legs and rise into the position to lead, yes, Tracy Martin, yes, men need to lead. If you don't understand how this works, women, you might have to sacrifice your comfort and your community at church in order for your man to build an altar to God within himself and then to become that spiritual leader that you want him to become. What if his assessment of your church is correct? What if your church has no life? What if your church has no fire for God? What if it's just playing church? What if, and listen, that I just, this is going to be the darkest thing that you're going to have to hear, right? And, and you know, if, if you think that your church is exempt, it's not. Most of the musicians 
a ton of the musicians inside churches everywhere are either gay, closet gay, outwardly struggling, or they're being attacked. There's some sort of sexual lust and purity, and so much of it is gay. So much of it is them. And so all of a sudden, you've got spirits on stage that are leading you in worship. Listen, Tyler Perry was just outed. You got this whole TD, whatever his name is, Jake's thing with the whole P. Diddy thing. And I, I don't even want to talk about it, but I, let's, let's, let's air things out in this case. The church has become effeminate. The church has become safe. There is no safe harbor. There is none. Christianity is not about safety. Christianity is not about comfort. And yet these churches use the language and the vernacular of a wartime gospel and a wartime church, yet the fruit is, oh, we just built campuses. We just, we, we just opened up another campus at a school. We just expanded our, our E-team, and we're taking territory by campuses. BS. You have the perception of a thing and not the reality of a thing. And so what I'm getting into, and there are more comments on Instagram, sorry, I'm looking at both screens. And then there are the women who would love a man who leads. Amen. God will return in the air. The Bible says he will come like a robber in the night. He will take us with him. If we obey, if we do not be, if we do not, he will say, depart from me. Efton and Vicky, if you are so focused on a rapture and take it, like, just do everyone a favor. If, if you, Amos says, do not desire the day of the Lord. Yet, New Testament says, and Paul says, oh, you know, pray that you be, you know, counted worthy to escape tribulation. And even Second Peter says that you're going to want to hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. What if we were more so about ushering in kingdom on earth as it is in heaven? What if harpazo, I'm going to segue real quick, the harpazo that's used for a rapture, in Thessalonians is the same word harpazo that's used in Acts chapter 8 where Philip is instantaneously transported 21 miles away. It's the same word. So you think you're going to be caught up in the heavens. What if the heavens is just another word for a spaceship that they used 2,000 words ago because they didn't have a spaceship? Okay, so what if you're going to be geographically transported somewhere else? What if the people that are, that are, that are taken away from danger are the ones that are actually left on the earth to champion and become the church that Christ returns to? This type of weird escapist perspective, if you have it, I pray to God you sacrifice it on God's altar and say, God, I'm exchanging my heart for escapism. I pray that I'm counted worthy, but I'm here for the work. I'm here for the party. I'm here for if I need to die and you need to sacrifice my life in order to usher in the kingdom on earth, praise God, I'm in. Whatever you ask of me, I'm in. I don't want us to be a church worthy of our own heart's desire. I want to be a church worthy of his return. I don't want to be a church focused on what we want and what's comfortable and what's safe and what keeps us. And here's the other part too. Everyone says, oh, he's going to keep us from wrath. Your threshold for wrath might be your food, your grocery store runs out of ice cream. Might be that your gas station, the, 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 the charge for every gallon goes up $3. Oh, that's wrath. I'm experiencing wrath right now. Oh, I can't get my Amazon package in, you know, the same day or next day. Oh, God, I'm living in wrath. God, the news says we're in the shadow of death. We are not yet at a table prepared in the presence of our enemies, and you want out. Your threshold might be simply weakness. And here's the worst part. What does Revelation 21 say? I'm glad you asked. We're just going to read it out loud because if you're out there and you want the rapture more than you want to do the perfect will of God, whatever that entails, let's just read Revelation 21. What people do you think aren't going to enter heaven? What if I told you that the Word of God actually tells us exactly what people don't enter heaven? Revelation 21, 8. Actually, Revelation 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's beautiful. Verse 8. <laughs> but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. So I'm going to give you... Amen. Someone was not filled with the rapture. I'm going to give you this this whole idea. Can we talk about SpongeBob or something on board? Paying a champ, you can you can see yourself out. Um, if someone believes 
wrath to be some sort of nominal hardship. I believe wrath to be they're already beheading people in the streets, the raping, the pillaging. It's all reached epic proportions. The migrants are having their way. The government has attacked its own people. That's some measure of wrath, and it's happening worldwide. And just in case you didn't know, there are farmers in France and in European countries who are completely going against in Brussels against the UN building. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's crazy, though. If you are so quick to adopt the parts of the Bible that you think apply to you, have you ever compared your faith and your perspective to Revelation 21.8? What if your desire to be raptured out is cowardly? What if your desire to be raptured out more than the desire to actually do the will of God is cowardly? What if your heart posture desperately wanting to hit the eject button and just to go up to heaven and be caught up in the clouds more than revival on the way down and being here through everything because it cost our God everything to love us and what does it cost you to love him back? What if you're a coward? What if your desire, and I'm saying this is the, this is the heart posture, if you're alive to self, you have a ton of desires that you want and you want and you want and you hope and you hope and you hope. What does God want? If you're a Christ follower, your job is to want what God wants, to love what God loves, to hate what God hates. And if you desire a way out, this is where the rubber meets the road. If you are cowardly and you get a way out, you might not end up where you want to end up. I'm not God. God can do whatever it is God wants to do. I'm simply here talking about spiritual warfare in the hopes that you will receive something from this and understand that there is a mindset of heavenly system on earth that is about the work, that is about kingdom, not about self. That's about righteousness, not about comfort. And this isn't an indictment to you. This is simply, have you done the work and want to actually exercise authority and dominion? Do you actually want to be Christ-like? Do you actually want to be called and be guilty and found guilty of being a Christ follower? Or do you just want to be guilty of, of just wanting a way out? I would rather die that martyr's death than go before Christ and say, you're a coward. All you fixated on and talked about and led people, not in strength, not in victory, not in authority, is just to want a way out and subscribe to a way out. And then think about this, right? How many of you are parents and grandparents out there? Is your job to raise a faithful generation or an escapist generation? What do you want? Do you want to raise your kids with this idea that all you're going to do is get out and get out and get out? Or do you want to raise them that no matter what come, God is with them. He will never, never leave them nor forsake them. He's commanded them to not be afraid nor be dismayed. And you raise a generational mindset of faith over fear, where fear is killed off every single day, where the enemy has no work and no sway into families' lives, where it gets that much harder and more difficult for anything that the enemy has in store to take effect and to take root in our family lives and our legacy. If you keep pushing, if you keep pushing and keep peddling this idea of a rapture over remnant, you might be found guilty of, of cowardice, and then you actually, even worse, might be found of generational cowardice. What if your weak-chinned mindset of just, I just want to love God in heaven, I don't want to be here for anything, yet Jesus was here for everything, for the benefit of others. What if you flipped it and you said, God, I'm actually going to do this, I'm going to go all the way through for you, for others. I'm not going to do this for myself. I'm not just going to focus on my own condition here. I'm going to focus on others here, because that's what you did. I say this again, the whole premise of this is identity, authority, and responsibility. Not only are you sp supposed to know your sonship, you're a child of God, a son and daughter of God. Not only, you know, are, are we authority-wise grafted in because of Christ and what he's done. The responsibility is to serve God here on earth for the benefit of others, for the building of kingdom, for the winning of souls, for the destruction, right? Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. His people are going to be following suit. Psalm 110.3, my people will be volunteers in the great day of my power, the great day of my battle. And so all that say, with all these things going on, the role that we have is to pray against the earthly conditions, the witchcraft, the ungodless, you know, the, the, not just the heathens, but listen, there, there's a seed of Satan. There's the you know, children of God and children of wrath. Our job is to speak 
Let's see. You only speak of yourself are ready for battle. Not repent. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Uh, you round either or you will burn. You round either. Oh, you round earth or you will burn. Oh, he's just talking trash. Sorry. Um, anyways, there's a lot of us. Uh, all of us could have been born any other generation and God chose us today for this. Amen. Yes. Um, all of humanity have lost their souls at birth. The birth certificate fraud has created a separate entity that enslaved you on earth. All births before. <laughs> oh God. Saving sovereignty. Listen, um, that's a whole separate rabbit hole. Okay. So there's a bunch of people out there with a bunch of different thoughts and ideas yet. The world is still kind of going the way, this way that it is. So all I'm going to say before I jump back into the news and other things, um, we have the opportunity of speaking into these things in a different way. Um, we're just not doing it. We're not doing it. And I would say, I would almost implore you and beseech you if there was ever a time to be about the kingdom of heaven, it's now. To be armed and equipped, it's now. Uh, we're going to jump a couple lanes. We're going to talk about some things. There's a bunch of comments too. I should probably even like look at the comments. John 15, lay down your life for others. Amen. Anarchy. Yeah, I said you're condemning. Yeah, sad you are condemning, and if you are talking to me, I'm not a spinning ball chaos theory ultra brain. Uh, I don't. These guys are just going off on flat earth stuff. Prayer groups that fast and prayer die to self. Listen to God and move mountains. Amen. This is the way. Armored up. Um, it's crazy right now because of all the times and seasons to be born on the earth. Like there's just so much noise. C.S. Lewis even wrote in the Screw Tape letters. Right, the best thing that he could do. Right, Uncle Screwtape, the best thing that he could do to get people's eyes off the prize is just to fill the air with so much noise that they cannot easily or clearly hear God's voice. Dina Trevino, I truly believe that we need to be praying for God's discernment because there's so much deception everywhere. Yes, Lisa Q, we have work to do. Uh, misrepresent you, made to stand in the gap. Amen. The idea of standing in the gap and doing the work and Isaiah 58 and Isaiah 59 intercession is to be in agreement for that, to understand the times, right? We're given the heavens, the the, the signs in, in the heavens to know the seasons, to be aware of the times. We're not going to know the actual date and time. So everyone calm down. Our work, though, is to be mature in faith. Um, all right, you know something at this point. I'm actually, I hate doing this. I just, I just removed someone that's being annoying. Um, I, I fall... <laughs> I follow the David Engelhart version of uh, of protecting the flock from noisy comments and trash. Um, human privilege is perverted. Godly privilege. Billy over on Instagram. All right, I'm going to refocus. Um, <laughs> yeah, Evan Hagen, thank you. He was annoying. He was. Um, th there's a bunch of distraction disruptors, so it is what it is. Um, it, we're around everywhere. So all that to say, listen, all these things that come up, your footing is to pray, not just for things, but against things, not just asking God for things for yourself. My encouragement to you all is to be praying on behalf of others, to be inter interceding on behalf of the entire body of Christ. It's not to be afraid nor dismayed. We covered that last night. But of all the things that are happening, listen, this whole thing could be a complete attack on that bridge, and we simply don't know. And you know, we've got other life things that are happening. I'm going to play another video. We're going to jump lanes for a second. So this whole trans thing, LGBT thing, and I call it a thing, right? We know it's depravity. We know Romans 1 speaks to it directly. Um, we know we can't celebrate other people's, you know, depravity. So like, you know, going to gay marriages, things like that. Yes, my unspeakable gift, pray down strongholds. Um, I'm going to play a video by a trans person. I want you to listen to what they say about trauma. I want you to know, like, this plays a role into why the enemy of our souls is trying to inflict trauma on children at a young age. Because what happens? He disconnects them. That trauma has to be resolved somehow. And many people are turning to homosexuality, this trans thing. And it's tragic because if Satan can destroy the family, the kids are an easy target. Let's watch this. I figured out the trans thing. And by figured out, I mean, like, looked within, made the decision, was comfortable with it, went on. I was like, okay, well then there's nothing else wrong with me. That was the thing that was always wrong with right. me. Clearly, because that's such a big thing. No one even goes through that shit, especially yeah. back then. Now everyone wants to. But you know, when I transitioned, no one even, I didn't. I never knew anyone like that. Never right. really heard of it. So I was like, okay, then that's my big problem in life. You know, I'll this move on now. Right, it's solved. 
yeah, now I see that like, that was probably a trauma response. So this woman is saying that her turning her body and destroying her body, her destroying what God made is a trauma response. Whatever happened to her as a child was so severe, naturally she she should have been born to something else. And this is this is the crazy part that we have to get this. And yes, trauma is real, angels among us. Um, this is this is the part where it comes in to pray for our enemies. Listen, <laughs> gay and trans people are yeah, that is a man, by the way. In case in case anyone was confused, that's a man. Gay and trans people aren't our enemy. They're afflicted. And there's there's you know drunkards out there that do horrible things that afflict humanity. There's there's pedophiles out there that afflict humanity, right? There's all these people, so many times, right? Hurt people hurt people, but no joke, legit. Traumatized people end up traumatizing themselves and living in that trauma and reliving the trauma and then traumatizing others. And so, so many of these pedophiles, when they're caught, basically what they say was, you know, they they probably were attacked as a kid and then they watch porn and porn is always a gateway into you know touching little kids, and it just it gets horrible from there. And so I say this because we need to pray for these people because statistically speaking, all of, but that's a he. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not calling that a she, by the way, Pegatha. Everyone else that's saying like, yeah, that's, that's totally a man. Um, it's a man that looks, that's trying to look as much like a woman as possible. Uh, it's still a choice. Many have trauma. They can still tru- choose truth. Okay. So yeah, they can choose truth, but if you understand what trauma does, and I'm not giving these people a pass on it at all, no, don't move them. We need to pray for the evil, repentance, see the light. Yes, my sister said this a lot about people she knew opening up in a group trauma response, the doorway to the enemy. Unless the cycle is broken, it continues. Yes, when we were all MK altered, our choice was taken away. Yeah, it's totally true. Um, saving sovereignty, I started praying for the people who pissed me off and I'm free from the burden of hate and anger. Amen. Totally true. And our job is to actually destroy the works of Satan, which even includes those on in our life. It's all true, and it's only Jesus Christ that can heal trauma. Trauma is real. Sexual abuse, I chose to hurt myself. Until you get the root, you will never be healed. I do get trauma being molested at age four. And yeah, this is so rampant. It's wild. And look at this. He even got, uh, oh, that's so cool. I got Craig, Craig Sawman Sawyer texting me. Um, we'll give a shout out at the end. So I'm, I'm going to play the rest of the video, but listen. And this is why we pray for people. This is why we stand in the gap. I want to see the enemy lose resources, minions. I want him to. See, I want to see him lose the narrative and lose the destruction on people's body, and people come forth. And so our job is to pray into all conditions, all people at all times. When you drive by schools and you drive by foster care homes and you drive by you know group homes and juvenile detention centers, I hope to God that you're praying. It, Literally, as you drive around, and most of us are distracted, most of us are trying to get to where we need to go, I, I pray to God you're spending time to intercede on behalf of other people that you don't even know, that the work is others. I'll go back to comments. Nikki Fellows, I went through that with my child because of trauma. It was one of the most trying times. She didn't feel safe being a woman. We worked through it. She's proud to be a woman. Amen. Humanity has so grieved the Lord. Don't make him weep. Amen. I appreciate Blair. He, she didn't recommend his lifestyle. Trauma is an opportunity for Satan to wedge his way in. Yep. My city is so dangerous now. I dress like a boy to hide. Yeah, that's probably a good reason to leave the town. Uh, by the way, if you're on Instagram and you're trying to comment, I can't show your comments on it. StreamYard and YouTube and Instagram don't don't play well. Trauma is real, but just because I liked cars when I was a child, it doesn't mean I wanted to be a man. Yeah, listen, and I'm just going to... I'm going to remind everyone about this, right? Um, I still hold my nine-year-old son's hand. It's scary out there. Um, never had any gay tendencies. I just doubt myself right there. Um, Pagatha, it's so incredibly sad. I pray that the scales fall off their eyes and parents who are being lied to from the eyes of the medical community, mostly from those who've suffered trauma. And I love that you're doing this. Bless you for leading the way. Praying for you. Thanks, Jen. Uh, rent can be endorsed, learn about it for yourself. God creates Satan counterfeits. Amen. Yeah, Tracy, you nailed it. Tracy Martin, go look her up. Official Tracy Martin. We need to jump on the podcast at some point. Um, it's not enough to just simply look at people destroying society and becoming predators. It's not enough to just look at the outward act. Listen, they're going to be judged. And if things go the way that they are, 
listen, for a lot of people that took the vaccine, the vaccine injuries are real. And a lot of people have buyer's remorse and a lot of people are getting picked off early. And so as much as, you know, I didn't, I didn't love the fact that people just caved in. Um, there are a lot of people who are manipulated into it. And so I still pray for them as much as I can. I, I'll be honest, and, and people I know that, that are in this healing space, there isn't a lot of healing going on. So the blood clots, there's a lot of people getting taken out early. And I, I want to say, uh, this, this is how this is taking shape. Biblical prophecy is unfolding like never before. There are only a handful of prophecies left, the big ones, the big box prophecies, before Christ's return. And it's not to say, oh, look, he's coming soon. Like, he's always been coming soon. Like, his imminent return is going to come at a point not of our choosing, right? Like a thief in the night. Some people think it already happened. But how, how much cooler would it be, regardless of the conditions around us, where in the name of Jesus, we pray heaven down to influence lives everywhere? Yes, Diane, absolutely. You pray, but it was a total showing a lack of faith. Yes. And Jeremiah 17, and I, I'm, I'm going to drive the nail on this with this, right? We're talking about identity, authority, and then responsibility. Jeremiah 17 says, cursed are those that trust in men, blessed are those that trust in God. Think about that. We are surrounded by people who are cursed. Dead serious. It's curse. I'm going to read Jeremiah 16, or jump lanes. Um, I'll read that part of Jeremiah 17 first, just in case you don't know it. Read it. Jeremiah 17 is such a... If that doesn't evoke some sense of God's providence, his anger, his hand, his position, what he's seeing, what, what he doesn't like, I don't know what does. Yeah. This is the part we get into. Uh, verse 5. That says, the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert that shrivels up. It's like these dead people. And shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in the salt land which is not inhabited. What's what's the balance? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaves will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. This is where we get this banger of a verse. The heart is deceitfully, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at his end he will be a fool. Here's a prayer for that. And before I actually, I'm going to read Jeremiah 16 first, and I'll get back to this part, Jeremiah 17. Um, <laughs> verse 10, Jeremiah 16, 10, and it shall be when you show this people all these words and they say to you, why has the Lord pronounced all this great disaster against us, right? Because that's what the modern prophets are doing. They're trying to tell us, oh, look, three days of darkness, they're going to crash the economy. You're going to own nothing and be happy. Okay. What does the Lord say? Or what is our iniquity or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord, our God? And verse 11 is where it kicks in. Then you shall say to them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, they have walked after other gods and have served them and worshipped them and have forsaken me and not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart so that no one listens to me. Um. Here's the high level, especially for men. So everyone understands that men, you know, society and culture, right? We th- we we thought we won the war in forty in the forties, and turns out we just imported all the the evil, you know, scientists f- the, from Nazi Germany. It was wild. Operation Paperclip and other things. It's it's documented. And in the fifties, we have television, and in the sixties, you know, one woman. One woman caused prayer to get pushed out of school. One woman. She saw all the way. The churches didn't revolt. Churches didn't take to the streets. Churches just said, oh, we're going to handle ours. And they didn't understand that their responsibility to the kingdom of heaven was to make sure that children are raised up in the way. Sometimes that prayer at school, surrounded by other kids who are praying at school, might have been the only prayer that that kid would have even brushed up with because their parents weren't there. And so then the men left. The men 
fell to bread and circus, the men left. Basically, they, they're the priorities, serving other gods, desiring to elevate other men and their exploits and their physical statutes and ability and not their own. They got distracted by sports for the most part. <laughs> Tom McGuire, I think we should purchase some Bibles for Donald Trump. I think he needs some money to pay off a porn star. Again, like, all right, so I'm going to put up this comment by this guy, Tom. I don't know who he is. He just commented, I got nothing against you, man. Why would you post that? Like, of what? edification is that based off the subject at hand unless you're kind of saying like hey this is a distraction like everything else yeah you're right there's just so many distractions like get your face back in the word and understand what's happening and that's why we're doing this that's why i feel like god's convicted me to to have these little talks and so high level the father's left the father's left the father's left the house of god they left the home they left the wife and then they left the kids and so our kids are left here like this trans person who's a man who's who's still parading as a woman. And that's the reality. Like, we have things to correct. They got distracted by more than just sports. Denise Martinez, yes, you're correct. Absolutely. But at scale, sports was the biggest, by and large. More men know more sports statistics than Bible verses. How many children, generations, remembered more song lyrics than Bible verses? It's not just the men, but listen, there's a mandate on men to lead the house to lead the home, to lead themselves, lead the house, lead the home. And it just didn't happen. Most wars are based on religion. I'm glad I'm agnostic. Tom McGuire, why are you here? I mean, you can hang out all you want to, but wars are not based on religion, man. Geopolitics is way more complicated than that. You know, there's the war that ends all war will absolutely be based on religion. And you're in this country, Tom, and hopefully that you appreciate the freedoms and liberties that you have because we're the last, we're the last country on earth with God-free speech and guns and your agnostic perspective is of no value and benefit if the demonic outpouring is going to override you and your thoughts and your behavior. Just so everyone's clear, right? Demons influence attitude and emotions. What are we seeing flaring up everywhere around the world is attitude and emotions. Um, so yeah, if if you want to be agnostic, you can. Yeah, there are a lot of trolls tonight, right? You must be doing something right. Thanks. I'll take that as a as a compliment. All right, anyways, getting back to all things, uh, protector fitness, people are being convicted by the word of God, the word they didn't want, but they needed. James, nations use religion as a pretense for geopolitical conflicts. The church is not to blame for that. Amen. Yeah, but it's again, it's like guys like Tom McGuire who think that, oh, look, it's religion. Oh, it's bad. That's wild. But listen, that's, that's the nature of things. Um, again, children of wrath, they're walking casualties. I'm getting back to my original point. We need to be praying for these people, for the kids, against the trauma, against all the things that these people have no idea the destruction that they're about to walk into. And you pray for them. And the more that you intercede, the more you engage on behalf of others in spiritual warfare, you actually pray to God that their souls be saved. Uh, blessed by grace, sports, the largest child trafficking events. Yep, a lot of it's connected. But listen, I'm saying this because it's not just that the fathers left, it's that the generations afterwards did even worse. And Christine, I'm in a situation where I cannot believe the knowledge regarding sports versus anything that actually matters. Yeah, totally. Jamie89 on, on Instagram, spiritual warfare gets stronger when the church sits down. We need to stand up. Amen. Okay, Barker, Tommy, use money, right? Yeah. Listen, I, and I'm not trying to, to sandbag Tom. Um, all I'm saying is where we're at and the conditions around us, um, we are in the most target-rich environment for spiritual warfare that has ever existed. And what are we doing with it? It's up to us. That's going to be a segue, right? What are we segueing to? I'm glad you asked. And this one is crazy. Just so we're clear. Wait, I'm going to do this one first. So, oh, praying in public, reading aloud from the Bible is hate speech. It's not yet. So, at a certain point, we become the villain in everyone's story per the government, per, per these WEF inspired and paid for governments, we become the villain in everyone's story. I pray to God that you are stocking up on everything, food, ammo, guns, that you're prepared. Um, because again, Jesus said, if we didn't have a, a sword to sell our cloak and buy one, it's not to be um, desiring to hit people's off switch, but Listen, when the government's coming, when the government is completely corrupt and destroying its own nations from within because it's part of the plan, then we need to be ready for everything. 
and this should not surprise any of us at any time ever. Um, so just be prepared for it, just awareness. If it's coming to Canada, it's like pricing the risk and the opportunity. They're trying to put it everywhere. That segues perfectly into this, Mr. Mike Glover. Field All survival. I'm saying is I'm not going to be a victim. If something happens in my hometown, if something happens where I'm at with my family, I'm going to handle business. And that requires training, equipment, and considerations. Just keep an open mind. All right, guys, let's talk about this video. I have a... He's great. He's basically what he's saying is, um, especially if you're a man, like your job is to be prepared for everything, whatever comes our way, be prepared for it, be about it. All right, we're going to keep jumping through news. This now is a great friend and American. Yeah, so Kirk interviewed Laura Logan about everything that happened with the bridge. It was insightful. If you have a chance, go look at it. And then, <laughs> and there's this. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this, but there's this. Um, if you live in New York, uh, buckle up. I can't believe I'm making this video, but I was almost punched in the face in New York City today. I'm sure we've all seen the fucking probably 10 videos of the Pardon the language, whatever. It is what it is. You know, we're just taking content. The girlies that are getting socked in the face in New York City. Um, I was very close to getting socked in the face today. I was on my way to school. Um there is an epidemic right now in New York City where girls are just getting socked in the face. Apparently, it's been going on for years. Why is this man going after random white women just punching them in the face in broad daylight? What we're getting to is attitude and emotions. Um, think about the question. The question is, why would someone do this? In the day and age, we're talking about spiritual warfare, the day and age that we're in. It's so much more dangerous, especially for women. A random man swung on my girlfriend in the street, and I was in the car watching it happen because she just got out of the car. And I guess he didn't know that I was with her. So I jump out of the car. I start fighting the guy. Here's a quick clip. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Stop. Luckily, I was there because I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't there. <laughs> when you look at the demoniac of Gadara, the legion demon, you look at the other ones, what did they ask Jesus? Said, have you come to torment us? Is it the appointed time? And then they said, have you come to kick us out of the country? And so this is, again, tying into your identity, your authority, and then your responsibility. What if I were to tell you the Christ follower, your responsibility when you see these stories is to openly pray, intercede, rebuke, reject these demons from their existence and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you out of this country. I rebuke you off of this land. Father, forgive the people who have caused these open doors and for America to become a dwelling place of demons of every foul bird, according to Revelation 18. And Father, I rebuke every foul spirit that's here especially the ones right in front of you in the moment, I rebuke them out of this country, straight back to Sheol. Demons are given geographic assignment. Look at the story of Daniel. All right, the angel was withheld, said, I was battling the prince of Persia, and now I leave to go battle the prince of Greece. In case you didn't know, Greece wasn't even a nation for another 200 years after that point. Um, and so, yeah, my unspeakable gift been praying demonic spirits are not allowed in our nation again it's one thing to a uh, blurry creatures talked about the territorial spirits yeah i don't know where the faith is they talk about all sorts of stuff it's random but it's one thing to simply accept these things and say like hey we don't allow you into our nation but they're here they're coming here on people our depravity our sin it increases the existence of these things and so uh as we <laughs> Brainwash to hate is one way of looking at it. If someone is given over to iniquity and sin without repentance, they open up doors to the demonic, and so the demonic comes in. And there's there's more videos I have on this, which actually is almost laughable. This one's pretty funny. Um, so I need to get something straight. Girls in New York are getting jumped now? Like beat up in the face? <laughs> like beat up in the face. Even the gay guys understand this is probably not supposed to happen these weird ass men are coming for y'all's face cards <laughs> i didn't know face cards was a thing it's it's absolutely now a thing so praise god for that i was just on tiktok scrolling and i saw hallie you know regular regular jane with a personality 
white girl. It keeps going. It's actually pretty funny. She got punched onto the floor, onto the ground. Oh, baby, I would have to fight. And it would have to be like I'm killing somebody. Coming for my face card? What the fuck is going on in New York? Hard, my friends, but damn. So now when people start shooting and killing, what happens? Like, what is AP, um, NYPD doing? Okay, so even a gay guy, yeah, his camera would go, you can tell, Soul Cowboy, you can tell. I just, I got to put that one up because that's funny, right? You can tell he's like walking like this. Like he's like, his little like Shantae thing is, is like swaying. He's, he's super gay. Um, so even gay guys know it's wrong to punch a girl in the face, right? There's even you know, places they won't go. But then think about his last statement. What is happening? What happens if they start using guns? And what are the police doing about it? That city has tied the hands of police everywhere to where the, <laughs> there are National Guard patrolling the subways. Yeah, super gay. You're welcome, Kevin. 176 Sports Nutrition. Um, yeah, National Guard are patrolling the subways in New York City. And even then, there was a shooting that happened. There was a whole other thing. I don't know if I have the video of that. Um, there was a shooting that happened on the subway. And it was wild because uh, some some altercation just went to a thing, just escalated, and the guy that pulled out the gun was actually shot in the head by his own gun. Let's keep going. <laughs> Look at that. That's the guy's face. Praise God for TikTok, right? That's supposed to be the guy too. With I don't know if those are no pants. Look at that. Yeah, it's like real damage. Um, as we go through, as we, as this wild, I'm showing all this stuff because again, we're supposed to be aware of the condition of all these things around us. Um, and speak well, there are people being pushed onto the tracks by random people. There's extremely heavy demonic oppression over a big part of Texas. Please help me pray for that, Sister Lily. And my PD ain't doing nothing because they've been defunded. Yep, yep, coming from my face card. I don't, I don't know what you guys think. Like, there's no, there's really not much recovery from this. There's not. Um, you pray for the women. Um, basically, what happened? Uh, I think if, if I have that video, I'm not sure. Um, some people are talking about how now they have to get their boyfriend to walk with them their fiance to walk with them in the streets. And then let's say that you want to grab a man to defend you. These are the men that we have. By the way, these guys, their music is actually pretty good. I just happened to stumble on them, but this is the man that we're dealing with on the streets. Walk away. This is it. Just take care of me. The blood is in pumping. I'm not mad at this music, by the way. But when a grown man says, just take care of me. And I will do my best. But man, it won't be much. <laughs> I mean, I want to call them grown men, you know. Um, but I will do my best, but man, it won't be much. That's what we're dealing with. It's all bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. And people wonder why I still listen to like thrice and eighties rock. A, a lot of worship music in there. I don't know how you think we're going to dig ourselves out of this. And again, this gets back, this actually gets back to spiritual intercession. We're supposed to be interceding on behalf of these people to pray down a different condition because this condition is not getting any better anytime soon. Country is no longer a Christian country. You see in Babylon, Christianity is not just rejected, it has become offensive. Have you noticed that? Yes, we are living in Babylon. But you know something? I have good news for you. We are in Babylon, but we are not Babylonians. We are children of the Most High God, and I praise God for that. Therefore, if we are not Babylonians, we have no business behaving like them. There are places in Babylon that you and I can't go. 
We can't dress like them or eat the food they eat. We cannot sing their songs and we cannot listen to their music. We are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Isn't it wonderful to know that God has chosen us as his very own and we have been called to represent him in Babylon. Therefore, we cannot conform to Babylonian standards. All right, there's a reason why I played that. Um, and listen, praise God, like the women that are watching, I, I loved everything she said. And she is talking in circles. Angels Among Us, you're absolutely correct. And that's what I'm getting to. Um, Soul Cowboy, wish I had the answers, but the population is far bigger and diverse than I can understand. I tend to just stick to helping people and not <laughs> worry about how others act. Um, Kelly John, women who say we don't need men better change their tune. Amen. And yeah, Kate Barker, it's not supposed to get better. Listen, I, I'm not mad at what that woman said. I'm not disappointed by it. I'm just, I'm, I'm giving a perspective. Praise God for women, right? My fiance is is the spiritual neck that turns the spiritual head. I'm just reminding everyone right now that her perspective is great if Babylon wasn't coming for your kids. Her perspective is true and great if they weren't, you know, closed fist punching women in New York City, pushing them onto the train tracks. Her perspective is great if there weren't migrants here that are that are here for war and destruction. The moment that they turn off the debit cards and stop paying these people, um, yeah, gee whiz, come from my face card. It's not funny, but yeah, it's that dude was actually funny. So the reality is this. I, I need to, within line of telling you about your identity, your authority, and your responsibility, your responsibility as heavenly citizens on earth is to understand that you have a very real enemy. You have sons of Satan. You have you know, children of wrath. You have sons of rebellion. And it doesn't say that we sing Kumbaya and we simply just need to stay set apart from them. That's not at all. The, God tells us to go into the world and evangelize. And God even tells us in Revelation 18, and I'm going to read it in a second, that there are agents of retribution. Our responsibility is to do whatever God wants. And so let's read... Revelation 18. Super quick. This is why I say this. Um, the more that we give women like that this nice message, a platform to speak, oh, let's just not be conformed to the world and it's it's going to we're gonna be fine. That's not at all what the Bible says. <sighs> After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory, and he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. Um, yeah, Soul Cowboy, I'm way more worried for criminal corporations than foreigners. Yeah, listen, it, it's all on deck. But here's what I'm saying, is that we are Babylon. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, as, as God revealed it, as the Word of God revealed it. Uh, the Babylonian system is a demonic system of government that they've been trying to usher in for centuries going all the way back to um, Nimrod. And if, if you look at this, why is it that all these demonic practices, policies at a governmental level are being ushered in all over the world? Oh, we're looking at Revelation, by the way, Revelation 18. How is it that the same country, you know, different countries all around the world are ushering the same policies at the exact same time? It's because they're being puppeted. There's something above them. There's a, syst a systemic perspective and application above them that's ushering these things in. It's a Babylonian system. So Babylon is fallen, is the second heaven demonic government system that's come down to earth. And then from there, Babylon is fallen. We are now waiting for Babylon to fall in the hour that it falls. What does the word of God actually say for us to do? Well, first it says, For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Uh, this is America. 
Verse four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, which means disconnect yourself from the cultural identities and ties that you have with Babylon. Lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues, for her sins have reached to the heaven, uh, to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. And this is the best part. This is, this is where it's going to be worth all the money right here. Render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works. I'm going to read that part again slowly. This is instruction. A voice in heaven is giving instruction to an agent of retribution. Render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure, it gets darker. In the measure she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. We consume the merchandise. Oh God, Apple is still here. Apple is still here. I don't know if I'm not going to kick yet. Let's see. Uh, I am going to kick that one, though. There are a bunch of trolls. Look at this. There are a ton of trolls out tonight. I'm just going to keep bunching them. Um, merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple silk, scarlet, every kind of cotton wood, every kind of object, every ivory, most precious wood, bronze. It goes all the way through. So I'm going to read that part again. And just, just so we're clear, render to her just as she rendered to you, which means, and G.K. Beale wrote in his commentary, um, the idea is that there is an agent of retribution. It's either God as agent of retribution, angels as agent of retribution, or people as agents of retribution. And I say this for one big reason. To Mark Sam, I'm going to explain. The Bible is filled with testimony, especially the Old Testament. It is testimony of people operating in great faith. The, the testimony of others is given to us, you know, from Joshua, Judges, Ruth, all the way through, of telling us that God operates through people. He gets credit for what people do. Uh, blessed grace, there is no karma. I understand if you want to use the principle for it, right? It's iniquity. We've sowed seeds. We've, we've destroyed the world. We've made it more depraved, and God hates depravity, so he's coming to judge. Spirit of God makes the Bible clear. Amen. Um, I'm not saying that you should desire to be an agent of retribution, but if you are fully operating in obedience and walking, uh, Cassie Cooper, her is America. Everybody pray for salvation of those trolls, then rebuke the mock spirits using them. Amen. Uh, demons are scared, especially reading Revelation. Amen. And we're not. So I'm, I'm saying this to, to let you understand something. And this is why it comes down to responsibility. Remember, identity, authority, and responsibility. God is not going to give you strength and understanding of things if you have no intention of putting yourself out there. If you have no need of wisdom, if you, all you do is hold up inside your home and you become agoraphobic and you don't leave because you're scared, God's not going to give you supernatural gifts and exploits just to heal people whenever it's convenient for you. God's going to probably equip people differently. And we're going to talk about this in tomorrow night's Bible study, so just in case you all know, like... We're going to push pause on, on doing this tomorrow for Bible study. Um, there's a story. You look like you, <laughs> like you voted for Biden. Well, it's actually, that's, that's entirely incorrect. All right. You know what I'm going to do? Man, we are actually like bumping all the people tonight. This is pretty funny. Um, the cool part is we get to look at it like our responsibility may in fact be repaying Babylon as an agent of retribution. I'm not saying you should want it. You should not want to destroy people prematurely, arbitrarily, right? Uh, Nikki Fellows, Bible study should be sometime around 4 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. 
But at the very least, we know that the Bible says there is at some point citizens of earth that will be partaking in the retribution of people that are actively working to destroy us. And so to the best of our ability, let's live like people of the book and let's be about our identity, our authority, and our, if you can walk it after this, our responsibility. Um, I'm even going to kind of give everyone an idea, especially if you look at the Hebrew and the Greek behind it. You know, that story of uh, Jesus leaving the 99 for the one. What if the one went adventuring? What if, uh, Claudine Hardy, can you teach her we were baptized in the Spirit, you can pray in tongues? Yeah, we'll cover that. Not tonight, but we'll cover that. Be resolute. Um, the idea is this. What if we serve the God of adventure? John Eldridge's book, While the Heart, kind of goes into this for men. But the idea is that we serve the God of adventure, not the God of safety. We, we serve the God of adventure, not the God of comfort. We serve the God of angel armies, not the God of hiding safely inside caves and cellars and houses that are boarded up. At no point, you know, there's a couple points, I, I take it back, a couple points that where the Bible says that we're supposed to kind of take cover and, you know, um, not be out and about. But for the most part, this whole book is an adventure book. It's an adventure story, and it's real. And it requires faith. And to the best of our ability, we're to live by faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I would even argue that when Jesus leaves the 99 for the one, it's because the one went off adventuring and needs Christ to go with him. Otherwise, he's going to be destroyed. I, I'm saying all this, all these things happening in the world around us, it's our responsibility as heavenly citizens to pray into them, to actually openly rebuke things. And when we see demons punching women in the face. They're not going after men. And even the men that are in New York, I've spent time there, there aren't many left. They're not. They're effeminate. They've attacked our young men in the food supply and the air and the water and everything. And so ours is to um, ours is to be about the work no matter what the condition is. Ours is to be in the world and to be praying against it, interceding first, first in prayer and then in person. So my my hope for all of you that are watching tonight that are still focused on the news can you know consume the content but process it through process it through the lens of the Holy Spirit. That's that's the hope. And so if you if you walk this out the way that God wants you to, there's a, actually a lot of work to do. We are again in the most target rich environment in all of human history. The question is what are we can do with it. We're gonna praise God. We put our heads in the sand. Are we gonna just hope to God that this all passes over us and we never have to deal with it? Or are we going to address this differently? That's it. I'm going to pray. Uh, thank you everyone for watching again. Like, I don't, I don't know what God's doing through these things. I pray to God that you're all blessed and you're all kept and you're all edified and sharpened. <laughs> What's going on with people tonight? Looks like your preaching is working, Steve. Spiritual attack at night. Let's pray for our enemies. Amen. Let's pray for all the enemies. All right. So I'm going to give us some closing credits. I'm going to talk about some, it's going to show some, you know, people, some sponsors and people we're lifting up, but um, Heavenly Father, just lift up your servants tonight that are listening, those people pressing into spiritual warfare on behalf of themselves, their family, their community. Father, thank you for equipping us, sending us, guiding us, teaching us. Holy Spirit, thank you. We repent if we've ever grieved you. We never want to disappoint you. Jesus, thank you for everything you've done. We can never repay you in a thousand second tries. Father, we reach out to those souls tonight that were trying to interfere. Father, we love you. We trust you. We know that you are walking with them, but we pray for the salvation. Lord, we pray for the safety of women everywhere. On behalf of other men that are supposed to stand in the gap, Lord, I declare that men are rising forward into their station position, that the women are kept, that the homes are being restored, that children are being protected and restored, that the enemy is losing his grip, that Satan's time is short, according to Revelation 12, 12, and that every foul spirit and demon and, and demonically influenced witchcraft is canceled, nullified. All their assignments are canceled, Father. I pray confusion into the enemy's camp. I pray a covering over these people. And Father, blessing and keeping in ways that only you can provide and do. Lord, we love you. We trust you. We need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's it. Thank you, everyone. I hope you were blessed and edified. We have a new little ending credit screen. We'll pick it up tomorrow, like 4.30-ish. Give or take. See ya. Oh, yeah.